I want to share a little history lesson with you that teaches us an important lesson about the supernatural and about the power of evil in the world. And the story starts in, in Massachusetts, in the Massachusetts colony in the late 1600s, in a place called Salem. The people who had settled there had very deeply held beliefs in the power of the Christian faith and in their walk with the Word of God as written in the Holy Scriptures. And they believed very deeply that if they could form a Christian community that was undivided and that was completely focused on the righteousness of Scripture, that the promises of Scripture would be theirs, and they would receive prosperity and success, plenty and happiness. That's what they believed. But the problem was that where they were and when they were there, they were very poorly equipped to manage the problems that they would encounter. They had a problem with the Native Americans who, whose land they had taken. They were subject to a lot of hostility from those Native Americans. They also had a lot of crop failures. They, nobody went to school on farming. There weren't a lot of farmers among the colonists. They didn't really know that much about how to raise food, especially how to do it in the climate of New England, in the rocky soil of New England very difficult place to farm. They had disease outbreaks, smallpox and diseases like that. They had conflicts with one another. They had all manner of failure and all manner of difficulty. And all that difficulty put them in a place where they were very deeply subject to a lot of fear and, and just a great deal of, of fear over the forces that they were contending with. Now, what happened next with, was that a group of young people, a small handful of young people under the stress that they were all living under, started acting out. And they acted out in such a way as to, uh, as, as to present as though they were possessed by demons. And so the popular belief took hold that there was a manifestation of satanic and demonic activity. And this was promoted by the ministers that they had, who were following scriptural mandates and trying to get their instructions from the scriptures, trying to respond biblically to what they saw happening. One of their uh, top leaders at that time was the pastor of the Old North Meeting House, Cotton Mather. Cotton Mather uh, really took hold of this thing and decided that if they could get rid of the witches and get rid of the demons, that everything would be fine and the problems would be solved. And so they arrested around 200 people. They interrogated them, torturing them into confessions. They executed 19 of them. One in particular, I believe his name was Giles Corey, was, was executed by being tortured slowly to death. And at his execution was Cotton Mather. They used as evidence for the prosecution of these witches visions that people had had, apparitions that people claimed to have seen. That was all taken as hard evidence in the persecution of the supposed witches of Salem, Massachusetts. Now, after this happened, this horrible atrocity happened, Cotton Mather uh, formed a group of ministers who made a publication that defended the process and the outcome of the Salem witch trials. Now, years later, 
there was another group of leaders who were the founding fathers of this country. And based on their experiences in with Salem, Massachusetts, and based on other absolutely similar witch hunts that had occurred all over Europe during the Inquisition previously, they decided that they would form a country here based on the separation of church and state, where government could be government for all the people, and the people would be free to affiliate themselves with whatever religion they wanted to choose. The separation of church and state. And also they formed this country on the basis of legal principles, having strict guidelines for the admission of evidence, and what we call due process. The due process of the rule of law. It's a sad thing in my book that we've got religious extremists and political extremists today who are attacking both the separation of church and state and attacking the due process of law. They want to go back to the good old days of the Salem witch trials. Well, I don't necessarily think that's a very good idea. I think that we learned some very important lessons there about the reality of the supernatural and the power of belief, the power of faith. The ultimate lesson there is that we all need to be careful what we believe in and who leads us into what kind of belief. Because what we believe has the power in our lives. And if we're not careful, power can corrupt us. That's what happened to Cotton Mather and his group. They used the problems of the people in Salem, Massachusetts to promote their own ambitions and promote their own agenda, and they used it very successfully. And there's a really important lesson that we can all gain from that. Be careful what you believe, and whatever you do, keep your beliefs as positive as possible. I'm Pastor Steve. Thanks so much for watching.